now on to the battle for Toronto, our regular Friday focus. We're keeping a close eye on the race for the mayor's chair. And we start tonight's special edition of Battleground with one of the front runners in the campaign, Olivia Chow. And Olivia, thank you for joining us and uh, being here tonight. I want to start out with this question, and it's kind of a big, big picture question for your campaign. There's this meme making it around the punditocracy, deserved or not, that if your poll numbers have flagged a bit, it's because you haven't campaigned hard enough as a progressive, that you've been too busy trying to be a better version of John Tory than John Tory. And if you want to get some of the momentum back, you got to get out there and be, well, the Olivia Chow, the underdog, left-leaning MP that everybody knew for so many years. All right, what do you make of that thesis? Well, I'm Olivia Chow, <laughs> the member of par former member of parliament mm -hmm. and uh, someone that really talk a lot about children and young people, about creating a more caring community for everyone. Uh, someone to have very progressive values. I've always been the same. I've campaigned the same way. And uh, now that it's after Labor Day, um, the campaign is really heating up. Let's, uh, so I, I hope people can hear that message. Uh, and we saw you had the sort of the first big announcement, the post-Labor Day campaign period. Uh, that being time to tax the wealthy, or at least wealthy homeowners, when they sell their homes uh, to increase the land transfer tax by a percent. And I understand that would that would uh, involved maybe five, six hundred homes a year sold at two million dollars above. Um, but let me ask you the broader issue behind that initiative, and that is, do you believe then that Toronto has a revenue problem as opposed to a spending problem? Well, every uh, research and uh, this research team or the uh, the city manager all talked about that city of Toronto has a revenue problem. And David, you know that it's not just Toronto that's saying it. Mm -hmm. It's really all the big cities, mayors are all saying the same thing. Uh, and that we do need more financial support from other levels of government. But let me put it, uh, point one fact to you. That we have in this city, a very rich city and very, very vibrant city, uh, 29% of our children are living in poverty. It's a huge, huge problem. And you're looking at uh, almost a national disgrace that so many kids are going to bed hungry and that one out of five young people can't find a job. So um, this city needs a change of direction because we can't continue to see all these families not doing well because you know that when a kid is, uh, is living in poverty, it means the parents are living in poverty, it's the entire family is in a bit of trouble, even if most of them are working hard at one or two jobs. It's not as if they're not working. They're working, but they're barely catching up. I think it's safe to say, looking at any number of polls since this campaign started, the broad trend line would be, as you just said, the city is looking for a change of direction. Seventy percent of voters are not going to vote for the incumbent if we believe all the polls. But change appears at this point in time to be coming in the form of John Tory. So let me ask you then, why would it be bad to change to John Tory? Well, if you look at Mr. Tory and Mr. Ford's policy, um, both of them have not talked about the importance of investing now for children. They've not talked about investing now for better public transit services. Both of them are not talking about how many jobs they can create for young people. Uh, they have not talked about how many affordable housing units that needs to be created now. Mm -hmm. uh, those are areas that I, I said we need to do something now because people can't wait. Both of them, one said, Mr. Ford said, we've done it, we've done it, don't worry about it, it's built, our subways are built. And then you have Mr. Tory that said, oh, um, in terms of public transit improvement, 10 years from now, right? His, his whole, whole plan is for later on. So he hasn't talked about why we need to invest now. So there's really, both of them are not talking about the importance of investing now and talking, they, they are also not, other than debating about public transit, um, they're not really talking about um, how we can lift some of these families out of um, a place where they don't want to be and they, we need to give them more hope and make life more affordable for them. And just to loop back again to our conversation, talking about revenue issues, and you mentioned other levels of government, primarily the provincial government. 
And in a way, the provincial government has entered the race this week when Brad Duguid, the infrastructure minister, uh, suggested that uh, he thinks it'd be great if John Tory was mayor. I want to ask you about that. Do you think it's appropriate for a member of the provincial cabinet to get into a municipal race in this way? And then, two, I guess the corollary is, okay, if that's the way it's going to be, could you, could you campaign against the wind government, essentially, as part of your campaign? Well, I have different um, people from all walks of life uh, supporting me uh, in terms of endorsement. And um, so it's not who you know, it's what you want to do for people and your track record. I have a very good track record working uh, with different levels of government. And as you know, David, you've seen how I've worked with the federal government and mm -hmm. the conservative government for the David Chan case on changing the criminal code. So uh, business owners won't get uh, penalized if they're just trying to protect their own property. Uh, there are many things that I've done with other different levels of government. Uh, with uh, provincial government, the uh, all-day kindergarten they had, the children nutrition programs really started when I did these pilot projects at the City of Toronto. So I have good track record with working people from different levels of government, different political stripes. Um, so I'm not, I'm not terribly worried about that. But I, I think it's important to look at concrete results because if you just make big promises and not say, how are you going to pay for it? then it's not an honest debate. And I think voters have a right to know um, where the funds are coming from. Uh, that's how I operate, and I want to be upfront and honest about it all. Uh, we've been, I've been asking you a lot about John Tory, but let me ask you a little bit about the incumbent, because he's kind of in the news today. It looks like he's going to have to testify in court next spring in the extortion case of his friend of associates, uh, Mr. Lisi. Um, do you have some thoughts about that? He, he, Mr. The four campaigns seem to be saying, I don't know why people keep asking me about all this. You've seen it, nothing new, new to see here. Should we be asking the mayor about this continually? Well, I'll be honest. I think some of the voters are really, residents are a bit tired about listening to Ford's uh, various going ons and scandals. And uh, it's, it's, uh, I think they're really focusing on how they could move around faster and not mm -hmm. getting stuck in buses or subways or streetcars, you know, packed like sardines. They want to know what um, we can really do immediately, which is why I've always, my transit plan is the only one that are planned by the expert, uh, that it moves people immediately by expanding bus services and start the construction now on the light rail, uh, which is in Calgary, in Edmonton. Let's get that going now. Also, um, my plan is fully costed out and it's very comprehensive with all mode of uh, transport, whether it's buses, streetcars, and light rail, and subways, or even go trains, all of that working together uh, to move people faster. All right, well, Olivia Chow running for mayor. She's got lots of ideas. OliviaChow.ca, I'm assuming. Learn all about it. Olivia, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.